little bit of a home set update, a little bit of cancer update. So, back in 2020 when I got cancer, I, um, I always store the kayaks down here closer to the lake. And then in the fall, I drag them back up to the house um, until I need them again in the spring. And I haven't been able to do it since 2020. So I'm out here today. I've already drugged one up. Got another one to take up. So what I do is there's this, this tree down here. I've actually got like an old bicycle. Um, pipsqueak. I've got an old bicycle lock that I wrap around that tree. And then I hook it through the kayaks there in the front. Because if I didn't, they'd probably get stolen. Somebody was uh, obviously storing some nuts under this one, I just noticed. But, anyways, there's actually a... Oh, that's a mushroom. I thought that was a bone. Um, anyways, uh, this year, you know, I think that a lot of things that people don't understand about cancer is it, it's chemo and radiation is bad. But the hardest part for me was actually the recovery from chemo and radiation. So I have been struggling all year, or actually the last three years. So since 2020, when the chemo and radiation ended in November of 2020, I have been struggling to do the things that I used to do. And this is one of those things I used to do. I just, I couldn't keep up with it. So I keep a spreadsheet of like everything that needs done and every year this was just always on the backlog and then now here it is December of 2023 I'm finally able to get this done so the progress is much slower than you think it's going to be because when the doctors told me about the recovery like I don't know, in some way I got in my head that like the chemo and radiation ended and like everything went back to normal, you, you know, the next day or the next week or the next month. I didn't realize that it was going to take, you know, three years in, I'm still playing catch up. So that's kind of what this is about. I just want people to understand if you know someone who went through chemo and radiation, or if you're going to go through it yourself, the recovery takes a long time. Now, I looked right before I came out here because I said I have a spreadsheet that I keep track of things. I had to start keeping track of things in a spreadsheet because, and it's basically, I write down what I want to do every day. And then when I get it done, I highlight it in green to let me know it's already done. Because early on, like... In 2021, I think it was, in like February 2021, I got where I was like a broken record. Um, the, the chemo causes memory issues, short and long-term memory issues. And I got where I would get stuck doing the same thing. And I might do that same thing 20 times in a day and just never knew that I did it already. So I would get stuck like a broken record. I just keep doing the same thing over and over. So I added the spreadsheet and that helped out with that drastically. Because now when I do something, I just mark it off my spreadsheet. And I kind of plan sometimes weeks in advance, like what I'm going to do every day or like what my goals are to get done. And some days I get those all done and then other days I don't. And... You have to prioritize everything on a homestead because some things you have to do at a certain time and other things you could put off until later if you needed to. So what I found out was this year I had 54 things that I didn't get done that are still in kind of like my backlog. That was things I didn't get done all this year. Now every day I've got anywhere from two things to ten things to do. And those 54 things, if I don't get them done by the end of this year, which is going to be pretty almost impossible. 
but they'll carry over into next year. I mean, they still need done. I just didn't get them done. So they're not really like such a high priority. For instance, let me give you an example. Every day I have feed and water the chickens. That's something that's got to be done. <laughs> you have to take care of your animals. But then, like one of the things that was on the backlog um, was, was fixing a piece of siding on my house. Now, I know that piece of siding needs fixed, but the world's not going to end if I don't fix it today or tomorrow. See what I'm saying? So you have to like prioritize everything. And th those 54 things are kind of like low priority. They need done. They don't have to be done today or tomorrow nobody's going to die if they don't get done, that sort of thing. But I'm so glad that it's just little things like this, finally being able to take them kayaks up there for the first time in three years, that show me that I'm making progress. Because the previous years, 2020, 2021, 2022, I couldn't do this. I, well, actually, there's multiple reasons not only did i not have the time but i also didn't have the physical strength i'll be honest with you these are way harder to drag up there than what i remember them to be even today today and i work out at least four days a week every week weight lifting and running and cardio um some some weeks is seven days a week but um anyways that's kind of like things are slowly getting back to normal it's just taking way longer than I thought it was going to take. And uh, another issue come up, you know, I, I normally maintain our, the driveway and UPS and UPS and U.S. Postal Mail have, you know, two or three weeks before Christmas said, well, we're not going to make deliveries to your house anymore because the driveway is in such bad shape. And, uh, well, Merry Christmas to you, too. I don't need your all service. Matter of fact, that kind of brings me to something else. If I order something from Amazon, Amazon pays UPS to deliver that item, right? doesn't cost me anything. I mean, I'm sure it's included in, like, my Amazon, you know, yearly fee. But I, and it might be included in the additional cost, but it don't cost me anything. So I don't care if UPS delivers my house or not. I just won't order from Amazon. United States Postal Mail, by law, the postmaster has to deliver mail. I looked it up. I actually had somebody who works for the post office tell me that. Not the local post office, which would be prejudiced for me to ask them. They don't want to deliver out here. I looked it up, and by law, a postmaster is not legally allowed to hold mail or retain mail, or not deliver mail. If it is mail addressed to me, they have to deliver it. Now, they didn't actually tell me they weren't going to deliver mail. They actually told the neighbors they weren't going to deliver mail and told the neighbors they would have to pick the mail up at the post office. Well, the thing is, I don't have to pick the mail up at the post office. I hope they have buildings of storage space because i will never pick up mail from the post office that's not my job my job is to read the mail that the post office gets paid to deliver and if they're not going to deliver my mail can rot in their storage because they can't dispose of it either like if they want to play hardball i'll play hardball they either going to have to store it for forever or they're going to have to deliver it. That's just the way it is. I'll never pick it up. All my bills are on auto pay. The only thing I get in the mail is junk and a couple of magazine subscriptions. I don't care if I ever get that stuff. So, uh, anyways, that's kind of life right now. But that did impact Christmas in a way because generally I order Christmas from Amazon because... Kind of hard for me to still get out these days, being around people that could potentially have COVID. or um, I still have an autoimmune issue, so the doctors don't want me getting any kind of colds, flus, RSV, COVID, any of that stuff. Because my body would still have a hard time battling it 
so it's just best to stay away from large crowds and people and places that stuff will be and uh that's kind of the way it's been but i don't need the mail near as much as they need me so I'll tell you a secret about moving kayaks if you got to move them a distance you want to pick it up by the wide end the back end of it and drag it so that the front is actually in contact with the ground because the back has like a little rudder thing that will drag and get caught on everything so basically all I do is I pick this up and I just drag it This one actually feels like it's got water in it or something. Oh, I definitely hear water. So there's a drain plug down here on the sand I'm going to have to remove. Drain the water out of it. Get all these leaves off of here. And then I'll start dragging this up to the house. Probably ain't going to record it because it's just me. be really hard for me to record dragging this way up to the house. It's, oh, I don't know. 300 yards up there. I don't really know what the distance is. 300,000 feet probably. Might be 1,500 feet. But anyways, I'm going to get this done. Did I also mention this is uphill? Only a little bit farther left to go. <sighs> Still uphill though. Uphill all the way. Had to shed some clothes. This is the first one I drug up. There's the bike locker that I use. Let me go get this other one done. Is it way down there yet? Feel the burn. All the time getting her done. Ah, <sighs> thanks for watching. As always, God bless you. God bless your families. God bless your homesteads. And uh, enjoy your mail and UPS deliveries while I can't. And uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons.